Hi everyone, welcome back to Yellow Cottage Soapery. Today I am going to use a new fragrance. It is called Sicilian Bergamot. And I will leave a description for that on my Facebook page. If you're interested, it's Yellow Cottage Soapery. And I picked out some beautiful colors for this soap. It probably doesn't match the name, but I don't care. I have um, 14 karat gold mica, no focus, from Be Scented. It's very sparkly. I have deep rose mica, also from Be Scented. And new pennies mica. I've seen Jen use this on her videos, and it's a really beautiful color. And this one, the reason I'm doing this color palette was this light rust color. And it's this beautiful peachy kind of reddish to it, pinky. And this one is Summer Crush Mica from Nurture Soap. So I have my uh, slab, yeah, slab mold. And I cut the slits on the side for the dividers to go in. And as you can see, I have cut a Coke bottle. And I'm going to try to pour the soap on this. I saw a, a video where they do acrylic pouring and they do on like soda bottles and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to try it. So I'm using full water in this recipe because I want it to stay fluid longer, hopefully. And I think that's it. I'm using those five colors and like an off-white. So let's get started.
back to unmold this Sicilian bergamot. It has been probably a week. It's been sitting here. It came out of the mold, the acrylic mold, very easily, but I, again, used the wax paper. This is the second time I've done it, and it works perfectly for me, and I don't mind mold on lining my mold. So uh, the outside came off perfectly. This was one of the sides, and you can see there's nothing. Oops, sorry. There's nothing on there. And so I'm going to go ahead and take these out. And I'm pretty sure they're just going to slide out. Because like I said, this has been sitting here for about a week. I'm trying to get this one. But because they're a little higher, it's hard to grab a hold of. So let me just see. I have not peeled it off the bottom yet. So maybe I'll do that. Well, this isn't how I did it before, but I prefer to take the sides out. But you can see it's pretty smooth on the bottom, so I'll just move that real quick. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and push them down and out instead of trying to get the divider messing with it. I'll push them up. Whoops. So... The colors are a little bit lighter, as you can see, than when I poured them, but, oh, it smells so pretty. And you can see that the way I poured it didn't really show any kind of design, so. And then with these bars, for some reason, I don't do it with my others, but sometimes they have like a little groove on them, so I like to just kind of use a potato peeler and just go across it just to make it look a little neater. I don't know why I do it with these soaps and not my other soaps, but okay. So I'm just gonna go on the end and slowly push a few out to show you. They're not gonna really be much different, but at least I can chat with you guys for a second. Again, I'm gonna go ahead with this cause it has a little edge and just kinda clean it up a little bit. And if you do this with your soap, you can save these scraps and Put them in another soap or you can do hot process with them but for those of you following my quail tales on my Facebook about the quails that I hatched there were 24 that hatched and one of them was a runt and I put him separate and tried so hard to keep him alive and to eat I fed him with a little pipette uh, or gave him water and he didn't make it and it made me so sad and then i've had several die since then and I'm, i said to my husband what am i doing wrong i feel so bad you know i'm crying about it and i looked it up and i didn't know this before i hadn't read this but quail only have five percent to thirty percent chance of surviving it's a very low number um, and I looked, re-looked at everything and I'm doing everything correctly. So you have to maintain the heat in, in their little home that I have for them, in their brood, brooder. See that? I'm going to push out, but I'm not going to push this one up. So the, the fact that it's a little lighter on top might be because it has a tiny bit of soda ash. So I'm going to spray a little alcohol on it and see if it brightens up. Oh, it does. See how it kind of brightened up a little bit, the pink? But I love the gold that I just kind of put on there, here and there. I think that was really pretty. So, yeah, I've lost several. It, they'll all be out there running around in their little thing, and, and then all of a sudden I'll go out two hours later and there's one laying there dead. Like, in that short of amount of time. They were pecking each other at one point, and I read that sometimes you have to take nail clippers and clip the sharp Peter, the peak of their bark. Oh my goodness, the sharp part of their beak off so that they don't kill the other ones. But we didn't end up doing that because their beaks weren't really sharp looking, but they were pecking each other, and um, they also get this thing called sticky paste butt or something like that where they 
they can't go to the bathroom because their hiner is blocked with like a pasty whatever. I don't know where it comes from. Must be from the food or just their digestion isn't great. But I've looked at that when they die and none of them have that. I hope you guys can see. It's not very bright in here. So I didn't see any of that. So I'm just, you know, hoping that the, there's 10 left. I know it sounds terrible. And I do have a place for them to go. There is a sanctuary down in Charleston. If they all make it, I can send them there. I don't know if it's called a sanctuary, but it's on an island down there, Kiowa Island. So we'll see what happens. But I will unmold one more because I don't, you know, I'm sure all of you don't want to hear about all that. But this smells so good. I love anything ber bergamot. Love it. But yeah, so I'll just spray them a little, make them a little brighter. Mm. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on my next video.